It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Style the Turnbaker Tournament where we are playing Innovation Artifacts of History. Um, I thought before we play we should look at people's scores just so we kind of know what kind of stakes we're dealing with. So first at the top here, this is going to be really easy, we have Dancing Bear. She's positive 451. She's currently the score leader of the whole um, English leg right now. So she's, if you have a favorite, she is probably your, like, a favorite in that you think they're probably going to win. She's probably your favorite because she has the highest score. Next is Chinky. He's got a pretty high score, relatively speaking. If you, if you look, every, everyone started in the negative. He's got a fairly, um, would I say, high negative or low negative? To, it's closer to zero um, than most. I would say he's in third place currently. Yep, third place. Kaz and Cat would be in second. She's the only other person with a high score. And then Banana, she's at negative 306. That's kind of a sort of an average score. So she's in most danger of getting eliminated and has kind of the most on the line here in this game of Artifacts of History. Let's count how many people we have left because we're looking for that magic number 10 or less in order that we can play our ghetto game. So let's go ahead and do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 people left so it's conceivable during this like mini tournament of innovation that we're playing that 6 would go away giving us 10 left. Um, that's possible. We've already had one person eliminated, Vaughn. We'll miss you, Vaughn. Um. We are seeing a beneficial parasitic relationship between Banana and Chinky here. This could be dangerous for Banana to keep doing, but it is helping her get far ahead, and she's hoping that will allow her to get some sort of advantage. Remember, she has the most on the line, as we just talked about. So she's doing mathematics. Chinky's copying mathematics, which gives her a draw, which lets her do mathematics more often. But that also lets Chinky keep moving forward. So I think she's going to keep doing it. Chinky can draw and meld a 7 anyway, which is what he would be getting by copying the mathematics. Um, we'll see if he even wants to, do, to copy. I think he might, but we'll get back to you. Chinky opted not to copy. He really wants to use his atomic theory, doesn't want to take the risk of covering it up, and that lets him draw and meld a 7 anyway and keeps her from getting the bonus draw. Uh, Banana uh, got mobility, which unfortunately for her is a red card. We still have that monotheism up uh, of Dancing Bear, which she will probably use to score it. Thanks to her monotheism, Dancing Bear has this nice 8 in her score pile. Monotheism also had her draw, draw and tuck a one. That shut down monotheism. It's, monotheism is an interesting card in that it has the seeds of its own um, obsolescence in it. However, that's also kind of good for Dancing Bear because that let her get a four down, which gives her um, the age requirement to take this achievement. She has more than enough points. Um, otherwise, Chinky might have been able to get it on his turn. So that's another achievement for Dancing Bear. She is currently in the lead in terms of achievement. Free from having to worry about monotheism, um, Banana is going to use these, these newfound composites instead of continuing with the math engine by drawing a card. So she's going to get um, cards from everyone's hand and their highest point card. So that's going to bump her up 13 points and knock the others back as well. Yeah, we did a round of turns. We're back to Banana again. Just thought we'd take a look at where people are at. Um, Dancing Bear got Reformation down, so she has the Reformation Fermenting combination. It might be too late for this to be super useful, but it still can be nice. This lets you draw based on leaves. This lets you tuck based on leaves, so it's a good way to get a lot of cards down. Um, maybe too late, though. Uh, Chinky, he got into the nines using Evolution. Same thing happened last game. Really, um, I think with Pinky, who was sitting here, and Chinky and Pinky rhyme. So there's some sort of like harmony in the spheres here. Um, that gets us back to Banana. Now, she's got some choices. Does she continue on to go to 10, or does she do some more damage with this? Chinky now has an 8 in his score pile. She could take that. That would put her at 21 points, and she'd also get, what, a 4? That would give her 25 points, so she could achieve. Um... And the points would be helpful when she gets to 10. The problem is, is that Chinky now has a 9 as well, and she can't take that from him because he gets to keep one of his cards, and presumably he would pick that. Another nice thing, though, is um, 
Dancing Bear does have a lot of cards here. Well, she's got three cards. I guess that's not a ton. She, so she could get pull three cards and 12 points off of a move, or she could spend the turn going up to, to 10. I think she'll go ahead and do the demand, because um, then once she's in 10, it's going to be good to have a lot of points, and she might not have another scoring opportunity. And he'll give her this. And I'll have to look at which cards, which cards she wants to keep. All right, and then she'll have another action, which will probably be to draw nine, so that she can go forward to ten on her next turn. Nothing big from Dancing Bear or Chinky. Uh, Dancing Bear is just you know, they're just kind of putting melding things. Nothing, just kind of getting prepared. Uh, we're gonna go back to Banana. Banana is gonna jump ahead now. I think she's got this nine. Yeah, I think she's just gonna jump ahead now to ten. She's not even gonna look at what the card is. That's how sure she is. She wants to go to 10. And we got the internet. And that might be one she just wants to go ahead and activate right now. She doesn't have any green cards, unfortunately. Yeah, but no one's going to be copying. Uh, so she gets to draw and score 10. She's going to try to end the game on points here. Draw and meld a 10 for every two. So she gets to draw and meld one 10. Oh, that covers up the dreaded composites, which um, Dancy Bear was actually trying to build up a defense against. A lot of good that does you. Things change. Banana looks like she may be able to win on her next turn. She's basically just been using the internet over and over again, which is giving her the highest score. We're probably going to have another game end on score. No one else has really been um, fighting her in the achievement dimension. And we haven't seen uh, really much artifact play at all, which is another way someone might be able to slip ahead. So Dancing Bear and Chinky really got to be thinking about what they're doing now because they are running out of time. Maybe one more turn left for them. Uh, how many 10 cards we have left? There's only three more 10 cards, so um, Banana definitely can end the game on her next turn. All right, well, Dancing Bear does have this Holy Grail. I actually kind of forgot about it. Um, she's going to go ahead and use it since it's probably her last turn and there's not a lot she can do. So she's going to return this five. That's what it says to do. And then she can achieve this five. You know, that's not really going to help, but it's something she could do. Uh, is there anything else? Oh, you know what? No, that's not going to work. She can tuck cards. She could draw and score cards. Now she has two actions. She's got to figure out what to do with as, as her world is crumbling. Okay, here's what she's going to do. She, since she figures the game is going to end on score, she's going to try to mitigate the damage using her compass. So she's going to demand, and this is only going to affect Banana here. Banana, we're talking to you. Um, I demand you transfer a top non-green card with a leaf from your board to my board, and then you transfer a top card without a leaf from my board to your board. So just do this one. The only card without a leaf is this coal. So now she has to have a coal there, which covers up her miniaturization. Not that that was going to be a useful card for her. Um, but now uh, Dancing Bear has these, this canning, which she can use. And six. Oh, now she has more factory. She was hoping Banana would have to copy her. Um, actually, I don't think she cares that much. All right, she's going to draw and tuck a six. And then she gets to score all our top cards without a factory. So that's going to give her some few more points, which will make it so that she loses less points when she probably inevitably loses this game. Unless Chinky can do something about it. Let's see. Chinky is going to use collaboration to kind of shoot in the dark here, see what happens with it. So the demand is going to affect both uh, Banana and Dancing Bear. They, they have to draw two nines. And then Chinky gets to decide which one he wants. Um, ooh, genetics could be really useful. Yeah, I think he's going to take genetics and force Banana to take satellites. That's going to give her even more more uh, clocks, which she's definitely, I mean, she one dogma action, the game ends. But with genetics, if he uses this as, as his next thing, he's going to get quite a few points, so maybe that might even make him win. I don't know. Probably not. I think these are primarily low cards, but let's see what Danimal draws. She draws two nines. He gets to pick one. Ooh, vision. Ryder can draw another ten. You know? So he could take vision and possibly, like, essentially 
reset much of the game. We would lose all the cards, and the only thing that would remain would be achievements, in which case Dancing Bear would be winning. I don't think that's chinky style, but his other choice is to take computers. Um, then he doesn't get to use genetics, but he would get to draw and mill the 10 and then do each of its non-dogma uh, effects. Huh. Gotta think about this, gotta consult with Chinky. It's a big choice. All right, so Chinky was essentially deciding between using genetics, vision, or computers. He's gonna go with computers. He feels like it's kind of like the most sure bet choice. Um, though really, who can say? Vision seemed a little dramatic and it would have actually put him behind um, Dancing Bear, essentially like kind of king making between Dancing Bear and Banana. And he doesn't want to do that either. Not that she would have been a sure thing to get uh, three more achievements, but maybe. Um, so he's going to tr try to see what he can get in the tens, and maybe something there will just like let him win or something like that. Feels like that's a better choice than if he used um, genetics, draw and meld a 10, score all the things beneath it. That's really color dependent. Um, and here he knows the 10s have st strong effects, so he's going to go ahead and do it. And it lets him splay his green cards up, which feels good. We'll do that later. Draw and meld a 10. And it's a demand, so it's not going to do anything. So if he had done the genetics instead, he would be getting quite a few points. Um, maybe not enough to win, but definitely enough to like mitigate a lot of his losses. All right, well, that's going to do it for this game. Um, banana... There, she had several choices as to how she could uh, score a 10 and end the game uh, by several, I mean two choices. Uh, so she did one of the two choices, it doesn't really matter, got 10 more points, ended up with six, 65 points. Uh, that's the winning score. So she got to add 650 to her score. So she's now the, the tournament, uh, the English lady leader at positive 344. Dancing Bear went down to 51, she's still positive. So she's in third place now. They basically swapped places, if we're looking at in terms of a horse race. And um, Chinky, <laughs> negative 748. So he is two points away from being eliminated. Just, just eked it out. Just eked it out. Um, things could have been very different. He took a shot in the dark on that last turn. It could have paid off. Um, if he had done the um, genetics instead, he probably, he, I don't think he would have won. Let's see how many points that would have been. Would have been 1, 2, 5, 9, 15, 24 points. So he'd be in, he'd be in a better position, but uh, probably still not positive. Wouldn't have been a positive thing. He wouldn't have won. Um, he would have just lost less. All right, we'll see you next time for the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. I guess we're all kind of going backwards order. Maybe we'll do figures in the sand next, and then we'll go back back, back to echoes of the past.